Hello everybody, it is Christine. Welcome here to my channel. If you're new, I am a homeschooling mom of three. I'm a second generation homeschooler and I live in New Zealand and I share homeschool content here on this channel. So if that is something that you're interested in seeing more of, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so that I can have you along because I would love to. This community keeps growing and is just such a blessing to my heart. I have met so many cool moms through Instagram and YouTube and it is so cool. It is so cool to have a virtual community as well as a physical and local one and I think it's just, it just expands your worldview and there are just so many more resources available to you. So if you'd like to join in, please go ahead and subscribe and we'll start talking about the topic of today's video, which I was like, what are we talking about today? Um, extracurricular activities and homeschool. Okay, so I've had this topic on my video list for a little while now, but I haven't really chatted about it a lot because it is something that I honestly have struggled with a lot. And there was a video that was put out a while ago now. It was from Jamie from Simply Living It. I will go ahead and link her channel for you. She's a homeschooling mom of three boys and she's been homeschooling for a while now. So she's got some good experience under her belt and she's just so sweet and supportive and encouraging. So if you want to go check out her channel, go and do that. But she put out a video about extracurricular activities and it was like, exactly what I needed to hear. God just used her to speak to my heart because I needed an experienced homeschool mom to say, it is okay if your child is not doing a bunch of extracurricular activities. And so that was a blessing to me. So I don't have tips and tricks for you because this is an area that I am navigating for myself for the first time really. And I'm still finding my way with the subject, but I just thought it was good to have an open conversation and maybe chat about it a bit more because it's not a topic from this side that I'm gonna talk about that I've seen talked about a lot. And I just wanna share my thoughts and my heart on it. And I don't know if there are other homeschool moms who feel the same as me, but perhaps it will be encouraging to you just like Jamie's video was encouraging to me. Also, if you hear yelling in the background, it's just my kids. They're playing outside. They're totally fine. They might fight, but they're also totally fine. <laughs> They'll sort it out. So the topic of extracurricular activities, and this is where all my insecurities and feelings of inadequacy come out. Because currently, my children are not enrolled in any extracurricular, I can't even say the word, extracurricular activities. And this is something that has kept me up at night. Like, I'm not even joking. I have spent so many nights lying in bed worrying about if I'm doing enough, how are we going to do it all? Like, how are we going to make it work and the cost of it and the time it involves and all that kind of stuff. And so if you're in the same situation, like solidarity, I'm here, okay? And I think there are a couple of reasons why it makes me feel insecure not having my kids in a bunch of stuff. One is that public school, like a lot of kids go through, they all do activities like after school. Like when I was growing up, we did activities and I know a lot of families who have their kids enrolled in multiple activities. I remember my mom just texting us around the place and actually eventually she put a stop to that and cut way back on what we were doing. But I see in a lot of homeschool groups, a lot of opportunities where all oh, my kids in, enrolled in this and that. And even moms were like, oh no, we don't do much. We just do three activities for one child. And I'm like, oh my gosh, we're not doing anything. Am I de like seriously depriving my children of like rich experiences? And so I have certainly lain awake worrying about what I should do. Now we did swimming lessons last year and that was fantastic. My children, my older two loved it. We only did it for one term because I've got to be honest, it was stressful because I had the older two enrolled in swimming lessons. So it was an hour, which doesn't seem that long, but I had my daughter who was then, how old would she have been? She was only a year old and she would go swimming every time, but I had to watch her like a hawk and try and watch my kids. And it was like, maybe someone else will relate to this. It was an indoor swim center and everything echoes, like everything. And to me, it is sensory 
overload. Like I would get back from swimming lessons and that was me for the day. Like I was done. I was absolutely exhausted (laughs) from being in that situation. And it's not to say that we're not going to do swimming lessons again. We totally are. I have definite plans to enroll my kids in swimming lessons again, but doing it with a tiny little baby, actually not a tiny little baby, but she was like a year old at the time. It was really hard work. It was really hard work. And so I pulled back on that. It was only once a week, thankfully. But I've looked into enrolling my daughter into ballet. The minimum number of lessons they have to do a week is two. Which, that's fine if you've got one kid. But I've got three kids. So then if I add in, for instance, jujitsu, I wanted my son to look at that and look like there were like three classes a week. Okay, now that's like, that's a lot already. That's five hours of activities. Plus, I will have a third child doing stuff eventually. And if we want to add swim lessons, and that's another hour. And so these things start building up. And I, I sit there and I'm like, oh my goodness. So we're going to homeschool in the morning. And then we're just going to spend our entire afternoon going from place to place doing activities. And not to mention the cost involved. And please, me talking about this, I don't care if you do that with all your kids. That's great. That is wonderful if you choose to do that for your family. But for me personally, that is not what I want. The beauty of homeschooling for me is that we get to just go slow. (laughs) There's no rush to be anywhere. There's no go attitude. There's not a huge level of um, competitiveness and like highly driven everything. I don't want that for my children. I think there's natural competitiveness that's great. And I do want them to strive to do their best and things, but I don't want pressure. I don't want them to succumb to like feelings of anxiety and all that kind of stuff because they're so busy. And I do know that there are studies out there that have talked about the dangers of overscheduling our children's lives. And I just know that for me personally, when I'm overscheduled, I am not a nice person and I shut down. And so I just want to I just want to really mirror healthy habits for my children. And so extracurricular activities has been something that I've really struggled with knowing what to do. And then Jamie put out her video and she said she doesn't do them. (laughs) Her boys spend time riding bikes together, going hunting, going camping. They do stuff as a family. They're inbuilt best friends as brothers. And it was just so freeing. And it made me realize that I was putting the societal pressures on my life again. Like, that's kind of the whole point homeschooling is I don't want to do things like everybody else is doing them. And we need to do what is best for our family. And so I don't know if there's much of a point to this video aside from just sharing. I've struggled with this and I'm sure there are other moms out there who are struggling too with wondering what to do. And I'm lucky in the sense that my kids are really young still, but I also am a long-term thinker. Don't even laugh at me when I've worried about what curriculum we're going to use in high school and my son is six. Like, (laughs) it's just the way my brain works. Um... And it's a lesson in trusting the Lord to just guide us into what opportunities present themselves. And I sit there and I think, is my child going to hate me if I never enroll them in ballet lessons? And this is the other thing. Okay, I don't know if anyone else feels this way, but I want to enroll my children in these activities purely for the experience that comes from being enrolled in these activities. I don't want my daughter to do ballet so that she can one day become a ballerina. Do you know what I mean? I don't want my son to do soccer so that one day he is a um, world-class soccer player. That's not my intention. It's just exposure to the experiences, to being in a team, to working in that environment, to being exposed to other children from different families and different lifestyles and backgrounds. There's all of that I want for them, but it's not to be this. And so many of these activities, it's with that competition mindset. And again, there's nothing wrong if you want that for your kids, but that's just not personally what I want. And so I wish there was more flexibility so that it could just be like, can we do it? Just do this for fun, please. I just want it to be fun for my kids. And I want them to gain some life experience from it, but not necessarily go on to be whatever it is in that field. So I don't know if anyone else feels the same. But I'm learning to slowly let go of these things that I'm worrying about. Slowly. I'll admit, there are so many nights where I still lie there and I think, am I doing the right thing? Shouldn't I be doing this? Shouldn't my child be enrolled in that? It seems like everybody's young kids are enrolled in two or three different activities. And I feel like I will be maxed out when each of them is enrolled in one. So... I think it would be super encouraging for me (laughs) if you could comment down below with your experience with this, whether you have your homeschooled children enrolled in lots of activities, or you do none, or you do very few. 
I think my plan going forward is to start with swimming lessons again, maybe next year, maybe the year after. I want my youngest kid to be able to go too, so we can just have an hour and a half once a week where everyone goes and does swimming lessons. That sounds so logical, doesn't it? And instead I'm like, no, we need to do it now because everyone's doing swimming lessons and so I have to do it. <laughs> it's so silly. Anyway, yeah, I'm just, I think that's what my plan is, is to take it very simply and just take it term by term and see what is available and yeah, all that kind of stuff. But I think it is so hard for someone who is a planner like I am to just be like, oh, I'll just take it as it comes. It's so unnatural, guys. It is so unnatural for me to think that way. It goes against everything that my brain wants to do. And so it is, again, it's a lesson in trusting God to lead us. Yeah, so again, this video was not meant to be like informative or educational or anything like that. I just wanted to sit down and chat about this and have an open conversation about it because I feel like it must be something that other homeschool moms think about. And I'm not worried about the socialization aspect, certainly not at this age, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. Share with me your thoughts in the comments below and I would love to hear some feedback on this and just maybe from some experienced homeschool moms who have been through this. I know my mom cut right back and said that she would never do so much again and only ever had us doing one activity at a time. There were four of us, so that's a lot. It's a lot, especially when you get to the high school ages and there's like a bunch of different things. Anyway, share your thoughts with me in the comments. Okay, I just tried to end the video and I literally just, nothing that made any sense came out of my mouth. So I'm gonna try this one more time. Thank you for watching this video and listening to my rambling and my thoughts and my heart. I appreciate you. I appreciate having you here and I hope that you stick around for my next video. I'll see you next time, guys. Bye-bye. the world had more of your smile? What if the wind could spread your love? What if your sweetness could reach everyone? There'd be no wars.